So, uh, hello uh, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Liu Hongliang. Uh, Hongliang Liu. Uh, in, I'm from uh, China, EZ Stack. And uh, today, uh, I'm going to uh, share a, a user case of, about uh, uh, Lenovo's user practice on OpenStack. Uh, because of the uh, flight delays, that uh, Lenovo's uh, private cloud director Peng Cheng and uh, their project manager uh, Zhi Yang couldn't uh, come to this uh, event. So I will make uh, this presentation uh, for, for them. And uh, sorry about that. And today we will uh, cover these uh, topics that uh, we are going to introduce a short background about uh, uh, Lenovo and its uh, IT uh, history, and also uh, the challenges that uh, Lenovo met in the uh, era of uh, internet. And uh, we also introduce uh, uh, why Lenovo chose OpenStack to build their private cloud in 2015. And, uh, also, we will cover how, the, how they use OpenStack. Uh, and from tech, technology point of view, uh, what kind of uh, uh, workload can run on their uh, private cloud. And also, we will cover the, their future plan on, on the OpenStack. <coughs> so here is an uh, here is a short introduction about uh, Lenovo. Uh, Lenovo is founded in early uh, in last uh, in 1984, and uh, it was the uh, very early. It is the very early IT companies uh, in China, and. Uh, uh, now, Lenovo is one of the world's leading personal PC computer company in the world. And it's a very famous brand uh, in China and as well in, in, in the world. Uh, in 2005, uh, Lenovo purchased the IBM's personal computer business. And then Lenovo became a, a international company. In, and uh, now it's the largest uh, uh, personal computer company in the world, and also is the fourth uh, largest uh, smartphone company uh, in the world. And in 2014, uh, Lenovo uh, acquired IBM's uh, SystemX business. So. Lenovo also uh, has the enterprise and the data, data center business uh, now. And uh, here is a short uh, history of uh, Lenovo IT systems. Starting from the 2005, uh, after the acquisition of uh, IBM's uh, uh, PC business, uh, Lenovo IT also uh, changed to embrace the uh, international technologies. Uh, and uh, the, as the con consumer business market changes rapid rapidly, uh, Lenovo's business strategy evolves as well. Uh, as the strategy evolved from the, as, as you can see from the double brand strategy uh, to the PC Plus strategy in 2013, and now uh, the Internet Plus strategy uh, from the business uh, point of view. And uh, at the same time, uh, the IT strategy changes as well. Uh, Lenovo did a lot of uh, uh, work on the IT uh, management uh, process, as, uh, for example, the ITO uh, version 2, ITO version 3, 
those IT management process uh, practice uh, for Lenovo's IT uh, manage, uh, system. And uh, as the internet, uh, tech, uh, internet era comes, that uh, lots of the new workloads, uh, like the e-commercial workloads, the big data workloads, such kind of uh, uh, new workloads uh, become more and more uh, uh, popular in, 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 uh, in their IT system. So their needs to some uh, also, some IT system change to adopt to the, the, the workload change. And uh, here is the, the traditional IT, IT architecture of, uh, for Lenovo. Uh, from the business point of view, there are two models. Uh, one is the R model, and the other is the T model. Uh, and from the uh, IT systems point of view, uh, it's divided to three types. Uh, one is the system of record, and the system of uh, differentiation. Another is the system of uh, innovation. Three, type of, three types of the IT systems. And, uh, from the technology point of view, most of the uh, systems are built uh, on top of the commercial products uh, like uh, uh, IBM Power, like uh, Windows, uh, Mac SQL Server, like uh, IBM Database DB2, and uh, uh, Tivoli, such kind of uh, commercial products. This the, is the traditional IT architecture. And the, what kind of uh, challenges uh, they face using this uh, traditional IT, IT architecture? These are the challenges. As you may know that uh, in the consumer business, lots of uh, uh, changes uh, in, in PC and in mobile uh, market, it changed really uh, rapid. <coughs> and the, from the uh, internet uh, business uh, model, uh, they need to be very, very, uh, change very fast. They need to be agile. Uh, and uh, the application needs to go online very, very quick and uh, the system needs to be flexible uh, to, uh, 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 to uh, for, for example, the, the peak of the workloads may be very, uh, uh, very dynamic. And uh, so uh, that requires the IT systems to be agile and uh, to be flexible. But uh, from the traditional IT architecture uh, is not easy. For example, it takes several days, it takes several days uh, to one week to deliver a new uh, application. Uh, they need to configure the, the, the server, the network, uh, the uh, storage, and the operating system, install the operating system, the uh, database, the middleware, uh, the application on them. So this kind of uh, uh, installation or deployment of those uh, applic applications uh, takes a lot of time for them. And uh, that does not uh, meet the requirement for their business changes. And also, from the cost point of view, that those uh, pro commercial products are very expensive. And uh, uh, the, 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 the resource utilization is also uh, low. 
is also very low. And uh, from security point of view, that the, the network architecture is hard to isolate applications in data center, and uh, the physical firewall uh, is hard to uh, be flexible for the internet applications. So to deal with those uh, challenges, uh, Lenovo chose to embrace the cloud computing technologies. And uh, lots of options here. So Lenovo did a, a uh, research on the major cloud computing technologies like, sorry. So there are lots of uh, uh, technologies can, can be chosen. There are public cloud, private cloud, and uh, uh, from, from the technology point of view that uh, there, there are a closed private technology and also there are uh, open, open source and the economic uh, uh, technologies, different choices. Uh, the good side of the uh, the private technology is that it's uh, consistent. Uh, the system is consistent, and uh, the good side for the open source technology is that it's, uh, it's, it it avoids the vendor locking. It's uh, <coughs> it's it, it it is more economic, and uh, also Lenovo did uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, research and uh, at that time the open source community uh, is it, there are several several open source community like uh, cloud stack open stack open nebula such kind of uh, open source technologies and uh, Lenovo's choice was to embrace t the open source and also uh, in 2014 uh, Lenovo become became a uh, open, open stack member, open stack member in 2014, and that made 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 uh, Lenovo's IT department more determined on open stack path. And here is the. Uh, after a lot of uh, testing and uh, POC uh, and the compression of those different technologies, uh, Lenovo chose to uh, use OpenStack. And uh, here is the uh, architecture of the OpenStack uh, uh, system that underlying is the hardware layer. Most of the hardware used is the x86 server. And uh, with the 10 gigabyte uh, network switch for the hardware layer, and uh, for the uh, virtualization layer, uh, the Lenovo chose to use uh, KVM uh, for computer virtualization and use uh, uh, object uh, storage as. F uh, use self as object storage and also self as the uh, block storage. And uh, for network virtualization, and then we will choose to use the OVS, open vSwitch. And uh, another point is that uh, uh, there is a active directory uh, system in Lenovo, and uh, they need to connect OpenStack with the Active Directory uh, system to uh, input their employees' information uh, to the OpenStack uh, Keystone, uh, Keystone database. And the upper layer uh, for is the OpenStack layer. There, 
the, the components are used are uh, Nova, uh, Swift, Cinder, Glance, Neutron, and Keystone. These are all the core uh, projects of OpenStack. And the more these are the mature op uh, projects in OpenStack. So then we choose to use the, the, the very mature uh, technology for OpenStack. And uh, above, uh, there is a horizon cilometer for the monitoring of the uh, systems and uh, also uh, the use heat for orchestration. Uh, here is the hardware top topology. Uh, there are three nodes for the controller nodes. Uh, <coughs> and on also the network workloads of, uh, is run on the controller nodes. Yeah, these three are the controller nodes physical nodes. And uh, there is a pool of uh, x86 servers uh, used for compute as well as uh, storage. That means a virtual machine runs on a compute node. And also, there is a safe, uh, there is a safe cluster run on the same node. So it's like a uh, Compute and the storage running on the, the same same node. So yeah, this is the the hardware topology, and from the network point of view. It's divided to, for the for the separation of the the network flows. So it is divided to uh, ma to f to four uh, networks. One is the production. So the production is for uh, the 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 workloads. Yeah, it's for the workloads network workloads and. Uh, the management uh, network is for the uh, management node to connect uh, to the computer or storage node. And uh, the storage network is for uh, the safe cluster to uh, recover the data or to sync the data. Uh, and the for PXE network is, to, to in, to, is, is for the installation of, of the whole cluster. And outside, outside of the OpenStack cluster, there is a hardware uh, uh, router, hardware router, and also a hardware firewall. And uh, there are two uh, network, uh, major network. One is the internet network, and another is the intranet network. Internet internet network is public, so. A user from uh, a user has the access to internet can go public network, and the intranet network can only access the, the network inside the Lenovo. So these are the different two networks, and uh, uh, a cloud user can choose which network he he use. And these are different uh, IP uh, pools for the different networks. From the security point of view, there needs to uh, some access control of the network uh, flows. So. For example,
for example, the some of the network protocols accept uh, from the uh, direction uh, from one direction, and uh, some of uh, them is not allowed. Uh, is is blocked. And these are the applications running on the uh, OpenStack Cloud. For example, the uh, E2E systems and the, the uh, e-commercial systems, the education uh, systems, and the, the model tool uh, analytics workloads, the, the big data workloads, and the the, uh, the code chat, the code chat workloads. So these are lots of uh, workloads uh, running on the uh, private cloud, and uh, they are planning to move more and more IT workloads onto these uh, systems. <coughs> and the the plan is that uh, uh, Lenovo is going to move uh, more and more critical workloads onto the cloud. And from the uh, business model of uh, private cloud that uh, there are major two roles. Uh, one is the as cloud provider, for as cloud provider, it's, it's mainly the IT department. They are behaving as the as cloud provider, and they operate the the cloud, and they provide the as resource to their customers. Their customers are the uh, as cloud consumer. These are the the consumers is actually the. Uh, business department inside Lenovo. So the consumer gets the uh, resource from the uh, cloud provider and, uh, the, and, and make the application and the other uh, business stuff uh, on top of the on the cloud. For example, uh, the the consumer can get a VM and uh, it can install the uh, DB or application on it. And uh, in in the future, there is a uh, big plan for a multi-site and uh, multi-region deployment of uh, OpenStack, that uh, it will be built across two cities in Beijing and uh, Wuhan, and uh, three data centers. There, are, there will be two data centers in Beijing and uh, one in Wuhan. And uh, the workloads can be migrated from uh, one data center to another data center, and the different uh, workloads like uh, they can also run a test and the pre-production workloads in in the different location, and uh, the workloads can be data and the data can be backup from one data center to another data center, and also the workloads should be able to migrate from one to another. And also, there is a, there will be a, a public connector for private cloud, so that uh, the private cloud can also manage a public cloud resource. For example, the AWS or Azure or Ali cloud is a public resource, public cloud resource, and uh, they can be connected. So when they a, a burst of the workloads happens, the 
uh, resource can be uh, created from the public cloud. And uh, when the workload goes down, the resource can be uh, the results can be destroyed from the public cloud. So this can re reduce a lot of cost of the private cloud. Okay, I think uh, that's all for uh, today. So do you have any uh, questions? Uh, not really. Uh, it's on AWS or Azure, yeah. And I, one thing I want to mention is that uh, usually the uh, enterprise use open source technologies in a very conservative way. Uh, in China market, that uh, the open source technology firstly used by the internet companies like uh, Tencent, Ali, uh, Baidu, such kind of internet companies, they hire lots of engineers to do their own open source, uh, and they, they get, the, get the open source code, and they change the code to uh, meet their uh, business requirement. That's a very common model for, our, uh, for the China internet companies. But uh, for uh, the enterprise companies, they use the, to use the commercial products to build their IT systems. So, but the, there is a turning point that uh, starting from 2015, uh, more and more enterprise customers began to use, to try to use open source technology, such as OpenStack. And uh, there are also an, uh, other projects like uh, uh, Big Data or uh, container such kind of new technologies. So it, it's there, there is a big opportunity uh, for, for the China market that uh, the, the enterprise market size is much more bigger, bigger than the, con it's actually bigger than the consumer market. And uh, these, these, uh, th this market uh, I think there is a very, very large room for the open source technology. They used to use, uh, uh, like, uh, for example, like I, IBM and the, the VMware, such kind of uh, pro commercial products. And uh, if they replace all these uh, commercial products with open source, there will be a huge space for, for, for the uh, companies like us. And uh, I think it's very, uh, a good opportunity for, for OpenStack as well. Please. It's uh, actually it's not a, a, it's not a sync. It's uh, in sync. So it's like a, a there is a script that uh, runs on a certain time that uh, it copies the incremental data from one data center to another. And the it, the problem is that the network bandwidth needs to be uh, very stable. And uh, for example, you, you can trigger a copy of the incremental data at uh, middle night.
and maybe it's uh, several times uh, of in, in one day. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's actually for the self. Uh, for example, the self has three copies for one object. There, uh, Yeah, story. Yeah, this one. So, uh, actually, the compute nodes has storage on it. So, when when a a write operation for one object, it it be, it goes to the private object and then uh, copy to the secondary and the third object. So, these are all go through the network. And uh, there needs to be a separate network for for this kind of data flow, and that's what the storage network is for. It usually is a separate uh, NIC. Usually, is a separate NIC. A ten gigabyte. Yeah. Uh, so far, it's uh, it's okay. It's okay. So the problem is that uh, if you if you do some uh, large scale rebalance, the network will be a bottleneck. So for example, if you add more nodes to the cluster, and uh, there will be a huge rebalance work, uh, data flow at, at one uh, at one uh, very short time. So there needs to be some uh, traffic control. To, to control the, the, the rebalance uh, uh, flow. Uh, sometimes uh, we need to reduce the uh, rebalance uh, uh, priority so it can go slower so, th so that the, the, bot the network uh, should not be a bottleneck. But it, the, the, uh, the trade-off is that it takes longer to rebalance. application server to the database server within your network architecture. Don't you need faster uh, pipe? <coughs> I'm sorry. So that goes to, I think that goes to the production network. It's also a 10 gigabyte uh, network. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. No lab. <laughs> uh, it's tricky. That uh, some of the workloads can be migrated. Some of them are not. Uh, usually, if the workload is running on a virtualized pro platform like a VMware or Zen. There is a, a tool to convert the the image, and you can uh, you can you can export that image and import it to OpenStack after the converter com converted the image, and that takes some time. So so the uh, actually the business goes down at, at during that time. So there is there needs to be an outage. Uh, time.
Okay, I think, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you have a good evening. Let's go to dinner. <laughs>